I recently went back down to Falmouth in Cornwall for my graduation from Falmouth University and I made a video on it which I will leave in the link down below. But this video is something that I've wanted to make for a little while and this is the student guide to Falmouth. Having started university in Falmouth in 2018, I know a lot about that town and I want to share it with you if you are a future student or a current student at Falmouth. I've made previous videos on my experience about Falmouth University and studying there and I will also leave those down in the description. But having now graduated, I want to make an overall video on the town. In this video, I'm going to cover some free things and some paid things that you can do in the town if you're new and you're looking for things to do. Some of these will be places to eat, some of these will be places to go and just relax with your friends. I know that not everyone has extra money to spend when at university, so a lot of these things will just be free things that you can do. First things first, I'm going to start with places to eat. There are a lot of amazing restaurants in Falmouth for all sorts of cuisines and because there are a lot of students there, there are a lot of vegan and vegetarian places if that's what you're interested in. I'm not a vegan or vegetarian so I don't have the most experience but I will try and mention them wherever I can. The first place that I would like to mention is called The Meat Counter. This is one of my favourite places to visit and eat at when I'm in Falmouth and it is a burger restaurant. It's located right on the high street of Falmouth so it can get quite busy but it has this really amazing atmosphere and vibe when inside. The menu is quite versatile with beef, chicken and vegan and vegetarian burgers but being a burger restaurant obviously the beef and chicken options are more versatile. I've had a few of the veggie burgers myself and they are very tasty all cooked to a very high standard and you can tell that the ingredients are fresh and they're actually made with care. They do regularly do deals throughout the week so for example I think they have Mates Monday that's what it used to be called where if you go on a Monday you can get two burgers for the price of one so if you're going with friends it can work out a lot cheaper. When it comes to prices the meat counter can be a little bit pricier for food but because you're paying for good quality burgers it's kind of worthwhile. Now moving slightly down the high street we get to the shed. The shed is located in Discovery Key, which is a key full of restaurants and bars and even the Falmouth Maritime Museum can be found there. The Shed is known for cocktails as well if you're into drinking and they do have quite a wide selection. The food in the Shed is very nice, there's a lot of fish options being right on the key, but from what I remember their veggie and vegan options aren't the most versatile. Moving away from restaurants and bars we have Good Vibes Cafe. Now I went into Good Vibes for the first time when I was there the other week and I absolutely loved it. I love a good cafe, somewhere that you can get good food and good coffee and good drinks and this provided exactly that. Most of their cakes and food available is vegan, um, in fact I think they're, primar I th they're primarily a vegan cafe. Whilst I was there I had a vegan flapjack I believe and it was very nice. I also had a smoothie that was made there and then and it was absolutely top notch. So if you're looking for somewhere to sit down and maybe do some work or just have a quick drink then I highly recommend Good Vibes Cafe. Another place where you can get great food is actually on the beach. I will touch on the beach later on but the beach cafe has a fantastic set of food and drinks and you overlook the ocean. Of course because of its location the prices can be a bit more expensive but you are right on the beachfront and it can get very very busy. If you can get a table then you're lucky. Some other places I want to mention are Buku's which is an American diner style place. They do good quality hot dogs and burgers. Once again the vegan options aren't fantastic there. In Asia is an absolute favourite of mine and that is located right on the high street just down the road from the meat counter. This is an Asian fusion sort of restaurant and I absolutely adore the food there and they do surprisingly have a good amount of vegetarian food. Of course the high street does also have some chains so you've got Costa and some other places like that but when you're in a place like Falmouth you don't want to be supporting these big conglomerates, you want to go to the small individually owned cafes and restaurants and that is how you get the best experience out of the food in Falmouth. Alright let's move on to some free things that you can do in Falmouth. If you're not into drinking and you're not that fussed about restaurants and where to eat then obviously you're going to want to do some things when you're not actually just studying. I think a lot of people are deterred by the size of Falmouth because you can walk from one end of the high street to the other in 10-15 minutes. If you come from a bigger city then Falmouth is definitely going to be tiny for you but there are so many hidden pockets of just things to do 
that you, you never run out of things to do. <laughs> I came from a small town, so for me, Falmouth was actually an upgrade. It was actually bigger, which is baffling. So the first thing to do for free, and it has to be mentioned, is the beach. Gillen Vase, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Everyone shortens it to Gilly. <laughs> Gilly Beach is a fantastic place to go, and whenever I'm in Falmouth, I make sure to just sit down on the beach. Believe it or not, I've never actually been swimming in the sea whilst I've been there, but it is a really relaxing place to go. I know that a lot of the university societies actually use the beach to sort of hang out on and organize meetups. So if you are part of any societies, you will probably end up being there at some point. There's a lot of surfing and swimming and water sports that go on in the sea. And I know that on New Year's Day, the locals tend to run into the sea naked. I think they're naked, I don't know. <laughs> this is absolutely free. You don't need to spend a penny to be there. Obviously, if you want a drink or an ice cream whilst you're there, you'll need to buy one from the local amenities, but just sitting on the sand is something that me and my friends did time and time again, because it's just really relaxing. Falmouth does also have multiple beaches, so you can head round the corner from Gilly Beach, you can follow the coastal path round and you will end up at Swanpool Beach. Swanpool is a lot smaller and it can be a lot quieter because it seems like not a lot of people know about it compared to Gilly. Again, you can sit down and relax on this beach and I believe they do some kayaking and canoeing and other water sports on this beach as well. Just opposite the beach, there is this wonderful garden called Princess Pavilion. Now I've been there a handful of times over the years and it is this really peaceful area for you to sit down and relax in. Because Falmouth is located on the south coast of England, there are a lot of exotic plants around and you can really see it in this garden. When you sit down at the very bottom and it's totally quiet, you almost forget that you are in Cornwall and you could be in Spain or somewhere like that. Again, this isn't a place that you will spend absolutely hours, but you can sit down, do some work, do some reading, listen to music and just get away from the stress of university. I rarely see anybody in there. In fact, when I've been in, there's probably been about two other people, absolutely maximum. Otherwise, I'm completely alone. Pendennis Point is another free walk and sightseeing opportunity that you have in Falmouth. Now, while Pendennis does have the castle, which you have to pay to get into, I believe it's owned by National Heritage, you can walk around the coastline for absolutely free. There's some ruins and some rocks that you can climb on, but do be careful because they can get wet. I've been up there many times, either filming for a short film or just exploring with my friends, and it is truly beautiful. There's normally some ice cream vans at the top if you need motivation to walk up there because it can be a bit of a hike. Beyond that, there are so many interesting nooks and crannies for you to go and find because every alleyway generally leads down to another dock or another quay or another pier, and you can just see the sea. The final free thing that you can do whilst you're in Falmouth is walk around the Falmouth campus. Now there are actually two campuses for Falmouth University. There's the one in Penryn and there's the one in Falmouth. The one in Falmouth is a lot smaller and only holds sort of a few courses. You will probably be on Penryn campus if you're going to Falmouth Uni. But there are some wonderful gardens around the campus where you can just sit down and relax. Nobody minds you being there. You're allowed to be there whether you're a student or not. And it's just a fantastic place to be just off the main road. All right, I'm gonna move on to some of my favorite shops now. Now, just because I'm about to list some shops doesn't mean you have to go in and actually buy something because if you're anything like me, I just like browsing. I will go into a shop with absolutely no intention of actually buying anything, but I'll just have a wander around and look at things. If you're out and about in the town with your friends, then I highly recommend popping into some of these stores. So first up, we have Trago. Now, I believe Trago Mills is actually a chain, but the one in Falmouth just feels so uh, intertwined with the community and when you go to Falmouth you kind of have to go into Trago. It's a little bit sad but you have to go in. You can get some wonderful uh, bits and bobs for your flat, your student accommodation in there or if you're visiting and you're just a tourist there are some touristy things that you can buy. For example I bought this the other week and it is a jar of sand that uh, I, I kept some of the sand from Gilly Beach because it's my favorite beach in the world and I wanna have it with me. Trago does also have a cafe on the top floor, which I believe is one of the cheapest cafes in Falmouth. I've never actually sat in it, but it always looks very nice. Next up, we have Shake Your Booty. <laughs> now, Shake Your Booty is a fantastic name for a store and it is just so beautifully studenty and Cornish at the same time. It is located down the end of an old arcade, which has this beautiful opening on the front along the high street. There are a bunch of shops and stores down there and they sort of change every couple years. But Shaky Booty is at the very end and it is this beautiful, colorful storefront full of amazing clothes 
and just products that are generally environmentally friendly and vegan. If you're looking for some new clothes or just want to explore something different, go into Shake Your Booty and the staff are absolutely lovely. They always say hi and they don't mind you just browsing. Next up, we have the Beanhive. Now the Beanhive is still relatively new to Falmouth and by new, I mean a few years old, but it is this wonderful, cute store, and I've been in quite a few times now. So in the Beanhive, you can buy some handmade and unique products from cards, badges, stuffed toys, clothing, and artwork from local, local artists. This store sort of summarizes what it means to be a family student to me, and I love it. I absolutely love it. The atmosphere is amazing. It's really friendly and bright and bubbly. And I think even on the front door, they have something that says like, no gray colors will be allowed in here. So. It's just wonderful. <laughs> all in all, Falmouth is a great town and I absolutely love it. If you are about to move to Falmouth, uh, you're gonna have a great time. I don't even need to say more than that. I know you're probably overthinking about a lot of things like, am I gonna fit in? Am I gonna meet the right people? Will I be okay? I thought all of those things and more and I was fine. So while there are definitely more things to do in Falmouth than the things I've just listed, hopefully this helps get you started and it just gives you the courage to start exploring because I didn't know any of those things were there, but I met some great friends who I trusted and we just did things together and now I've got a lot of great memories. If you're interested in more videos like this, then do let me know. And if you're not subscribed, please make sure you are because I'm so close to hitting 500 now. So thank you very much. Until then, I've been Luke. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you next week. Bye bye.